Hi everyone, Dr. S here. This is the first video in the Flourish by Design with Perma Plus video series. This is entrepreneurship and innovation education at Western. Passion, purpose, profession. Let's go ahead and jump in. So where does this fit in our overall structure? This is part of Idea Grit. So you can see it here, Flourish by Design. And to remind you, Idea Grit is the passion and perseverance to bring ideas to impact over and over throughout one's life. So this is one of the ingredients to building that passion and perseverance. So what's flourishing? Flourishing is a high degree of well-being and low mental illness. And this is as opposed to struggling, which has high degrees of well-being and high degrees of me mental illness, floundering, which has low degree low well-being and high mental illness and languishing, which has low well-being and low mental illness. Flourishing has high well-being and low mental illness. And then we get to the by design piece. This is about being intentional with your creation and working what is within your control or potentially within your control or influence. And so we believe that well-being can actually be designed intentionally into your life. So what's well-being? Well, here's one definition of entrepreneurial well-being. So this is well-being specifically for entrepreneurs. This is the experience of satisfaction, positive affect, infrequent negative affect, and psychological functioning in relation to developing, starting, growing, and running an entrepreneurial venture. Oh my God, that is a huge mouthful of stuff. What are we really talking about when we're talking about well-being? When you boil it down, we basically want to be happy. But here's the key. It's not about just a fleeting happiness. It's about sustained happiness. How do we have the sustained sense of well-being over our, in the course of our life, over the course of our time here on the planet, and not just spikes of the emotion of happiness? That comes down to be, being the question that we want to address when we're talking about designing to flourish. So why do we care? Well, for one, this just uh, brings all sorts of benefits. It makes us feel better. When we're flourishing, we are able to do all sorts of things that we might not otherwise be able to do or feel or experience, such as we feel better, we have more grit, we enjoy life more, we have greater impact, we have more fun. Who wouldn't want to do this? And this is a real issue for us as entrepreneurs and innovators because the work that we do is challenging. If you look at the mental health of entrepreneurs, in this study you can see that these uh, researchers from California and well, in Columbia as well, out of Stanford, Berkeley, and UC California, San Francisco, looked at the different levels of mental health conditions for entrepreneurs. And the E stands for entrepreneur, the C is a control group, and the G is a general population. And you can see in each of these different cases, for depression, 30% versus 15% with a control group. ADHD, 29 versus 5%. Addiction, 12% versus 4%. Bipolar, 11% versus 1%. Now, this study is not telling us whether entrepreneurship is causing these things or people who have these conditions tend to go toward entrepreneurship. That's not clear. But what we do know is the entrepreneurial process is difficult and it's challenging. If you take a look at this quote, the entrepreneurial experience is often an emotional roller coaster with periods of ex exhilaration and fulfillment and other periods of stress and resource depletion. The majority of new businesses fail, and those that do survive face challenges as they seek to establish external relationships with suppliers and customers and develop internal routines and relationships among employees. This is difficult work. We're trying to make change happen. Change making is challenging. And a few different people have talked about this and tried to graphically grab this. So take a look at these, these different ones. A day in the life of the entrepreneurs. You can see there's, there's ups and downs from my... I'm excited to, ugh, this is hard, it's working, I messed up, give up the good for the great, I think I'm going bankrupt, uh, I'm good, I was wrong, I suck, wait a second, my life is great, to 
this one, which is, you know, this is awesome. This is hard. I can do this. Oh, I suck. So we're back to that one again. It's working. I'm broke. Need more coffee. I did it. It's worth it. And this one I thought was pretty funny. It was a hand sketch. I'm not sure who did this one. I can almost read their thing. I'm doing it. What have I done? And you can read the rest of the ones that are on here. And so we know there's ups and downs. And what we want to do is make sure that we're flourishing as entrepreneurs, innovators, change makers, so that we can keep at it, so that we're healthy, we're happy, we're able to engage and be effective in what we want. And so we need to ask ourselves, what is it that leads us to being able to flourish and be successful in these environments? And that's where we get to this model of PERMA. And we, of course, use PERMA Plus. I'll talk about that plus here a little bit later. Happiness, but defined by the positive psychologists and the psychologists who are getting this is subjective well-being. And so it's still back to this well-being, but the subjective piece is that you get to decide. You know, are you well on all these different areas? Or do you have, what level are you experiencing with each of these different uh, areas? And... This all comes out of uh, the efforts by the positive psychologists. And basically, this, this fellow, Martin Seligman, he's the guy in the upper left-hand corner, he, what, when he was the president of the American Psychological Association, he made a really drastic pivot for psychology. Psychology up until that point uh, was, and this is in the early 2000s, was really focused on the darker side of our mental wellness. How to take people who are languishing or uh, having significant difficulties where they're floundering and struggling and how to get them back to neutral so that they're no longer in that state. But what Seligman said is, but why aren't we talking about people who are basically uh, mentally healthy? How do we help them live really excellent awesome kick-ass lives and that's really what selling them was getting at now he started this whole thing uh, he's often called the father of uh, positive psychology but I can tell you this this stuff goes way back all the way to you know a lot of people will be able quoting Greeks and like and uh, other folks from way back in ancient times all the way up to a lot of these different researchers that you can see here on your right Seligman was credited as the founder, but you have these other folks. Uh, you've got Dr. Lori Santos, who's actually, she runs this course called the Science of Well-Being at Yale, which is the, Yale's most popular course, and it's really a science of happiness. It's pretty cool. She runs a happiness lab there, too. You've got uh, Barbara Fredrickson, who is in the middle there on the left-hand side. She focuses on positive emotions, has done some really interesting work related to uh, love, You've got Angela Duckworth. She's uh, uh, worked on grit. She's That's her defining area. And that's actually how we built our definition of idea grit off of that. And then you've got uh, Mihai. And I won't even attempt to say his, his last name because it's a super difficult one. But he's the uh, guy associated basically with this concept of flow, which we'll get into it. We'll get into all of their work at some point uh, later down in these different videos. So let's go ahead and uh, jump into the PERMA model itself. What I'm going to do is basically give you a walkthrough of these. And then each of the follow-up videos that are coming to you will describe these in more detail and give you more ideas about how to actually develop these and design these into your life. So let's take accomplishment. Accomplishment is one of those things that was very early uh, identified as something that was important and many of us are taught to do this go out accomplish things get things done check the boxes off make sure that you have a lot of these under your belt the problem was is that as we continue to work on accomplishment as you get more of these under your belt it starts to lose its ability to affect your overall well-being all by itself and so that's when this idea of meaningful accomplishment came into play. Not only are we going to try to accomplish things, but we're going to try to do things that are meaningful. So it's connected to some sort of purpose or helping other people, or it gives me a sense of purpose or whatever it might be. And meaningful accomplishment 
is one of those things that I think is really, really front and center right now. People trying to say, how do I have meaning at work? And so on. And I think it actually is also uh, kind of behind this whole concept of work-life balance of, you know, let it work, let's try to go ahead and get that to be something that at least isn't uh, terrible. But if you're doing a balance, then you gotta say it's life versus work. And it's perhaps just not holistic enough to be able to really capture full life well-being. And so this is when you start to get into these other areas, which really start to give you good insights. Of course, meaningful accomplishment, sure, that'll give us some high well-being, but these other pieces really start to get into helping us understand the complexity of the different tools that we have to work with. The next one is positive relationships. This is the idea that relationships matter and that having a nourishing group of people around us that help us to have uh, support and not be alone are really important. And this goes for things at work, this thing goes for things in your life's play, it goes for a lot of different areas of your life. And again, we'll get more into this as we go on into the other videos. Engagement is about being engaged in your strengths. And the idea here is that the more that we can be engaged in our current or potential strengths, the more that we're going to feel uh, high degrees of well-being because we're kind of in our zone. And this is where it ultimately leads to this concept of flow that you can be finding yourself in a place where you're so engaged in your work that time just kind of slips by and uh, the only thing you can concentrate on is this cool stuff that's in front of you. And again, we'll talk more about that in the engagement video. And finally, there's positive emotions. And this is the concept of having emotions uh, and experiencing positive ones versus ones that tend to drag us down. And I'll give some different language around emotion when we get into that video. And Barbara Fredrickson is like the world's leading researcher on this at the moment. And what she comes across saying, which I think is just really fascinating, is that negative emotions are so powerful that you actually need to experience three positive emotions to make up for one to just be neutral. And so the idea here is how do we get more positive emotions into our life so that our overall well-being can actually go up rather than just say neutral or be depleted. And finally, the last one is about the plus. We added that in this because of statistics. P-E-R-M-A are all identified through research studies that use statistics, which means they're using the average. There are many things that you could add to this list that are your things, things that make your well-being go up that just might not have made it through the, re the rigorous research proce process, yes. For example, exercise, that's not on the list. Clearly for me in my life, if I don't have exercise, uh, I'm gonna have a hit to my well-being. Or nature, it's super critical for me personally to be out in nature uh, regularly if I'm gonna have a high degree of well-being. And that's not on that list yet, but I know that that's part of me, so I added it to my own list, and that's part of the plus. So from here, what we're gonna do is invite you to look at more video videos that are available, um, and we'll have one on each of these different letters. All right, I look forward to talking to you more about this and seeing how that you can flourish by design with Perma Plus.